So, well, first things first, um, as we are based in San Francisco, but also in Europe and England and everywhere, there's this infamous uh, joke about, is it center of excellence or center of excellence? And as you can see very carefully, there's a slight grammatical change. And this is only funny if you are a US or UK citizen. So let's skip the jokes. Um, first things first about uh, who I am, what I do, etc., etc. I think I'm a geek, but uh, I actually, this word was used quite often. And then I went like, okay, I actually need to know and understand what actually does mean, what does geek mean? And then there were three definitions. So a person often, often intellectual bent, who is disliked? Now, I don't recall that people, well, there may, might be some people who dislike me, but, and then there's this enthusiastic person or expert, especially in the technical field or activity. Now that could be quite a match. And then there's, and this is really interesting. I didn't even know it existed, but there's a carnival performer often billed as a wild man whose act usual includes biting the head of a live chicken or snake. Well, that's by far not what I do, uh, at least not uh, during the day. Um, so let's just skip these two uh, definitions and stick with the number two. So that's actually who am I? I'm a, I'm a geek. I like gadgets and stuff like that. Now, um, let me put this a little out of way. This were all the phases. Who am I? Actually, um, I uh, started working, uh, well, in my life, like, okay, well, 25 years ago or something like that. So basically, um, just go through the, through the list and I sort of colorized it a little bit so you know what's uh, the more, more important, the less important things. I'm actually a customer success manager at Elements of Cloud. Um, talk to you a little bit later what Elements of Cloud is, but let's just stick for that now. I have more than 25 years uh, experience in what I refer to as process knowledge management, retaining process knowledge, managing process knowledge in organizations. And of course, if you do, if you have things, you know, if, if you're a sales force, well, guess what? It's quite an important thing. Uh, I'm also a Lean Greenbelt. I am one of the co-inventors of what we call the universal process notation. Um, then a little bit slightly more, well, less important, but, but still interesting. I'm a technical geek. I love gadgets. I co-authored two books on blockchain, one of my hobbies. I don't earn any money with that. Yes, I do contain some Bitcoin, but um, I'm consider myself as pretty practical. So, well, everybody of you guys have probably bought an Ikea uh, cupboard uh, once uh, in your life, I suppose. And of course, uh, when you start, you know, when you start assembling that thing, then you somehow you come to the conclusion there's a, a hole missing. So what do you do? Well, you just look further on or you just drill that extra hole. Now I'm one of those guys who drills that extra hole just to discover that on page six, I missed something and actually the hole was actually there and I turned the whole thing upside down. Um, I like practical things. <laughs> so, um, now I'm also a social economic geek, uh, video editor at, at elements.cloud. And uh, yeah, when I have still time left, I am a musician, play guitar, piano, do some sound editing. I'm a runner. I have a daughter and a son, all both in the uh, in the health uh, healthcare industry. And then I, well, guess what? I enjoy life at the fullest in the province of South Limburg, which is currently totally flooded. Um, but fine, this will dry. I, I heard tomorrow there will be sun again. So that's that's all the good stuff. Now, Elements.cloud is the company I work for. Um, they're based, their headquarters in San Francisco. Uh, we are pretty much all over the, the earth. So that means that we have our uh, production or product management in the UK. Our developers are in Ukraine and uh, this guy is sitting in the Netherlands. Um, we consider ourselves as what we call the configuration knowledge platform. Uh, I know it's all marketing stuff. But that's pretty much what we do. So trying to understand, well, guess what? What's, what you, not just what your org does, how your org's configured, but also how to maintain it in, uh, you know, in, on the long term. If you're interested, you can always uh, have a look um, at, the, uh, at the website. Right, so let's just cut the crap and go straight to what I think we need to understand. Um, yeah, and normally I, <laughs> this, is, this is virtual. So I was normally I would go like, oh, is there anybody who built a tree house in their life? And never thought, yeah, I did, or maybe not. But yes, I actually did. I built a tree house in my life. And, um, you know, they often start like very innocent, like small and, you know, you know like, like this one. Um, and, you know, uh, anybody there who actually remember, you know, that anything else starts accidental, maybe accidental admins. Um, this, you know, this, this sort of things get out of hand very soon because suddenly, you know, you get this, uh, you get some stuff, right? You'd be like, well, you know, we need a window, we need some more stuff. 
and uh, yeah, should probably, especially administrators who are on the on the call, uh, they probably will remember those questions like, could you just you know add that flow or that report because on Monday we need this really you know, just just build another one. Uh, yeah, but we have already have twenty one thousand. Yeah, that's okay. You know, fine. Just just go on. Um, so things become a little bit more complex, and then you know they asked changes. So. They discovered these new things and then, and, you know, all those beautiful new clouds and, of course, integrations. And suddenly you, 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 you find yourself in the middle of pretty complex buildings. And uh, in the end, you get things like these. And this is a treehouse, got a little bit out of hand. Um, and, of course, this is what you get. More stuff and more stuff and more stuff. So, and then if you then ask people, do you run this work on your own? They're going, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, so basically, just to give you a sort of heads up on how orcs grow, they no normally grow pretty dynamically, right? Um, they, that's it's almost like human life. They, they just they just grow and then go to some some stage. Um, now, adding and changing things because of the world change or economic changes or things that's pretty nor that's normal. That has been done like like well since the human species exists. You have to adapt, you have to change. So that's pretty normal. Um, the thing is, though, that you want to stay agile. You don't want to end up in the end like, yeah, you know, it's a little bit clunky. And uh, actually, you can't build anywhere on top of this because, well, we just don't know what will happen if we add yet another piece of wood to the, uh, to the top. Will it break? Will it not break? Uh, you just don't know. And then, of course, you don't want to get like this. You, know, you just push that one button or you took away that one item, that, that pick list item, and then oh, you forgot all about the fact that actually that one pick list item was actually hard coded in some flow and the whole thing just came to a trining halt. Um, at elements.cloud, we have a thing called uh, confessions. So elements.cloud slash confessions. And one of the questions was, uh, well, it's not working. And then you would just ask, yeah, what do you mean with it? Right, so what's not working? Uh, a, uh, by the way, it's quite funny to just to go through these confessions, and you, some of you might already know them, but you know sometimes you just go like, no, this really didn't happen, and you go like, yeah, well, it's not real confessions. So to sort of set the scene, um, I just want to go on with. So how do we, you know, get our orcs in proper shape, right? How do we keep it neat, agile, and scalable? So you know, deduplication. It's one of those things you have to do to keep things neat, but also, um, so how many reports do we have? Uh, are we still using these managed packages, you know, we, which we once sort of installed, we forgot all about, or maybe you haven't even have inherited an arc and um, you, just, you just don't know what, what kind of things you have. And then you just, you know, one day you just go like, okay, uh, there's, a, there's a limitation on a couple of things. Uh, now we need to really deep dive in the, in, into, into the whole thing. Um, so how do we do this? How, how do we keep it uh, neat, agile, and scalable? Well, we need something. What do we need? Well, we need tools. Ah, yeah, tools. Because if you want to, you know, put a painting on a wall, you cannot do this with your hand. You need a hammer and a nail, and you know, you just need tools. Um, so you learn. You, you you buy a tool or you, and another tool, and then before you know it, you have a box full of tools. After a while, and um, well, some of you uh, might uh, like love this because uh, you know exactly what tools you have. And, uh, you know, there's also this other thing called skills. Uh, can you actually handle all these tools? You know, do you use the hammer properly, which is, you could say, yeah, you know, a hammer is not very complicated, but there's, there's tools out there, I, I can guarantee you, by the way, that are pretty complicated. So you also need skills and you need some more things. You need actually um, what I would tend to uh, say as control on, on things. So we tend to very quickly focus and, on, on collecting the tools, not just that, but uh, also these tools end up in isolation. Uh, for example, you have specifically bought that one tool for that specific uh, objective. And then, you know, there's this other problem. And then you, you know, you, you use that tool for that specific and other problem, et cetera, et cetera. And before you know it, you have a whole bunch of specialistic tools to solve specialistic or, or specific uh, problems. Um, now, tools are also, uh, and they also require organization. So a tool is not just a you know, piece of software, uh, it can also be a methodology. It can also be structure, it can also be organization, right? So 
actually, we need something to get all these things uh, in, under control. How, how, how do we handle this before it gets out of hand? Well, we need what we uh, would call or refer to as a center of excellence. Now, center of excellences are not really new. They, they exist already for years. What, I, what we have discovered at Elements is that center of excellences, in, especially in Salesforce, in the Salesforce market, well, they're not new, but they're also not, well, widely spread, to put it nicely. Um, we run quite often into these accidental admin situations where you're like, yeah, I just got in here and then somebody said, hey, can you do that? And I said, yes, did a couple of sterile hats and uh, oh, there you are. Um, so basically what I want to, uh, go to go through with you guys is Salesforce has, became, has become a strategic platform uh, for a lot of companies and a major investment. So before, like in the, what is it, 90s or so, uh, it was still CRM, but now it is just so much more. Um, and, and well, it's actually a main, main uh, platform that actually runs pretty much the whole organization. So basically the digital transformation agenda has accelerated as it still does. And business agility requires more rapid implementation, of course. And then rapid, you know, if you go very fast, you also, uh, the risks will increase and you have to mitigate those risks. So in interesting, uh, interesting times. So what do you need? Well, you need, of course, uh, the adoption within your uh, business of, of Salesforce, because you can create all these beautiful things, but if nobody's using those things, well, why bother? Um, because of, well, guess what? The world changes, and I mean, really changes. And yeah, if, if you look at the COVID pandemic, that's one change, but now, I mean, it, it happened, what is it now? One day ago, two days ago, the rainfall here, who could have thought about the fact that actually these things are flooded now, and there's business, you know, that came to a grinding halt. So how, how do you, you know, how do you actually anticipate on that? And how do you reduce delivery risk? So basically, that's the three stuff, three things we, we want to address here in this, uh, in this presentation, or well, not just presentation, but also in general. So basically, uh, what we talk about is always the same things. You know, we have the typical uh, implementation life cycle. So we have... Uh, Let's just start with the operation, the green part. So we monitor stuff, we restore things, we, we make sure we are compliant. Uh, then we still analyze things. You know, what do we need? Is there any need for new things, et cetera, et cetera. We have to build stuff. And then of course we have to deliver the stuff and then we go, you know, we start, we start again. And basically they, these life cycles are pretty common, but not always pretty, uh, shall we say, baked in stone. You know, it's, 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 they, they do exist, but sort of in a, in a wobbly manner. So what we think is needed is a center of excellence. That's not a department, that's just a concept. So we need some body within the organizations that actually can handle all these things, who actually can set the rules, etc. Uh, but also see what's going on, what's, what's, what needs are, etc. Now, of course, it depends on how big you are, but we'll come to that uh, pretty soon. So basically, um, if you look at the three houses uh, situation, we started in summer in 99 with small stuff, you know, the citizen developer, accidental admins, et cetera. And then suddenly, you know, things grew and became bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we are now 21 and you want to have those really mature, you know, tree houses. Uh, what you certainly don't want to end up is, is, the, is the picture above, where, which is actually yeah, we refer, this, uh, refer to this as uncontrolled agility. So you, you, you're fast, but you have no idea what you're doing, um, which is sort of dangerous. So basically, um, what you want to do is to bridge the, what we call the skills and the tools gap. Um, so how, how, how would you do that? Well, one of the tools, so in this case, the COE, the center of actions is the tool, is, is actually to know about what is in your organization? What kind of resources do you have? What kind of skills do you have? What kind of tools do you have? Are they working together? You know, so it's, it's a pretty high level thing, um, but it's sound, it might sometimes sound very daunting as in like, oh, no, 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 we are way too small to, to, to start. This is just, you know, from a cost perspective, this is maybe just a little bit too, you know, over the edge here. Um, so how, how would you start? Now, uh, before we do that, just to give you a little bit idea about, uh, yeah, that it does make a difference to have these things in order. Um, 10K Advisors did actually a, uh, a survey and they came up with this, uh, this picture that they showed us that actually, um, if there's like 91% uh, of the customers said, yes, we have some sort of, you know, center of excellence, then they end up with pretty high re return of investment. So, but yeah, so it is an investment, but when you have to see these things in place, it pays off, um, just to show you that. 
Now, what are these? Oh, sorry about that. I have, that's my daughter. Now she doesn't know that I'm in a web session, but that's okay. Um, so what are the benefits of the center of excellence? Uh, well, there's a couple of benefits, but I thought to pick only three. Uh, the, the, the most important, in my opinion, is the reduction in operation costs, right? Uh, so by eliminating inefficient practices, cutting implementation time for new skills and technologies, I think that's one of the biggest uh, benefits. Then, of course, you have things like consistency, how you offer your services and, and create products. Now, actually, that's quite nice for your customer. So <laughs> if, you're, if, you know, if you're a customer, you, you, you like to have the same experience over and over again. That should be quite, uh, quite clear. And then of course, there's this other benefits like that the COE members, so the, 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 the people who are actually, uh, you know, sort of build up that, that body, uh, they can actually help MPVs to adapt how to, you know, improve the hardware work, uh, share all kinds of technologies, you know, oh, I find out is this one tool, uh, did you know about that? So it is nicely canalized, categorized, and then also, uh, I would almost say funneled in, in, into, into, well, more efficient ways of, of learning and, and, and support. So those are the benefits. Now, there's of course obstacles. Um, you probably know about the, if it is not broken, well, don't even try to fix it. Now, I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, even I do it. Um, I, I actually recently wrote an article on LinkedIn on the um, changing that lamp in your living room kind of uh, problem. Where you went like, yeah, but I have to switch off the main power. Well, do I really need to switch off the main power? Oh, I'm not even sure. Well, yeah, but the washing machine is running. The my 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 uh, you know my son is doing actually an online learning session. Mm, you know, let's just go to the switchboard and, and just see what switch I need to you know. Mm, or maybe I shouldn't touch it at all because it's actually not really broken. I think now that's the typical attitude a lot of companies have um, until it's too late, of course. <laughs> Um, then you have complexity. So oh, no no no, let's just let's just not spend time on that. There's no well, there's certainly no time for that. Uh, let alone budget and you know what we don't have the expertise so leave it alone and then of course there's conservatism you know play the what we call the wait and see game so eh, let's just wait and see what happens you know we'll, we'll, we'll be fine basically all those three obstacles can be summarized in one picture and you probably know that picture uh, all of you I, I'm sure you know it but it is a very, very true picture. And this is happen this ha this happening all the time. It happens all the time. So yeah, I'm too busy. But I have this really great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is typical. And well, this is a little bit um, I mean, maybe extreme, but it is actually true that, yeah, on one way, you know, you need to go on uh, because you know there's, there's the stuff going on. Uh, we don't have time for that. But on you know, it is the the creation of technical debt uh, in, in, in it's, it's a typical, uh, well, it's almost there at your, at your, um, at your finger, uh, fingertips there, that actually you, you, you create technical debt as you go. And that's what you want to actually avoid. So what are the core elements? Well, basically you have to have a team. So you need to really, really seek an appoint evangelist in your employee portfolio. So if there's anybody calling, yeah, I, this makes sense. Not like oh I have lots of time so I can do that. No, just just look for the energy and 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 you know people who actually uh, see the uh, the benefits in that. Then you have of course the and that's an important thing. Uh, don't start uh, thinking about oh yeah we need to do it all. No no no. What is your biggest pain? You know we have duplicates. Now fine, let's just focus on those duplicates. You know that's 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 the first thing to to tackle. Or we have we run out of fields or whatever. We have too many managed packages. Uh, we have no idea what. Focus on those those things first. You don't have to boil the ocean. You can even not boil the ocean. And of course, the purpose depends on focus area or, or capability. So basically, support through best practices. And I think that's also an important thing because why would you make it? Why would you overcomplicate? Right? You, you you shouldn't have to do that. So then you have to start to build one, right? So you have to come up at least with some vision and strategy. You know, well, well, why, do, why do you need one? Then, of course, you have to design and develop the, uh, the COE and then, of course, to complete and commercialize the COE. Now, define, uh, when I say define a vision, uh, it means also things like, uh, you know, what kind of, do you need a committee uh, that, you know, that, that actually uh, can help you with the financial resources? You know, leadership is one of those things which are really, really important. And then, of course, if you look at design and develop, uh, development, the, uh, the, the COE, you, you have to actually see 
um, how to construct it. That does not mean that you have to create yet another department, right? You don't, you don't have to do that. It can be very, very virtual, but you have to have some leadership, some, some structure in there. And when that's, that's running nicely, then you can start to complete and commercialize, which actually comes down to, oh, maybe we should have a logo or maybe we should have a specific, I don't know, theme, you know, so that everybody can recognize that. It can be in any form, you know, a website, you know, something where, you know, where to go to, some recognizable things so that your, your, your users can actually see and then go uh, to the right, uh, right areas. So basically, there's a couple of uh, pillars um, you can think of. Quite a lot, by the way, but um, they are, these things are not new. So if you look at these things, uh, these are not roles of people, right? So there's 13 of these or 12 or so 13 of these pillars. That does not mean that you have to have 13 new people on board that actually take care of all these pillars. These are skills, right? So you have to look at vision, things like vision, leadership, governance, uh, change control, methodology, etc. There's a whole bunch of things that are, uh, yeah, well, should, should be present uh, in, in, in your COE, it should be handled in your COE. These are also what we call uh, faced uh, pillars, meaning you don't have to immediately you know, tackle them all at the same time. You can start with a couple of small things and then just build out, if, if needed, you don't have to you know, again, you don't have to be completely complete. And these are also, last, last thing but not least, they're also solved problems. So there's nothing new in here. These things have been done in many, many organizations for ages already. So they're not like, oh, this has never been done. So there's always some, some resource on the internet to actually uh, see what we actually mean with standardization or change management or tooling or prototyping. So basically, if you look at the, uh, yeah, how to start and then you know what to sort of uh, embrace, is um, is this actually this 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 picture? So and again, I put this these three three houses in the background. But basically, it comes down to if you have a small admin team, there's no dev team. You know, you could sort of focus on yeah, you, know, you do need leadership. You need some some evangelist. You know, yeah, that that sort of you know how do you say this pulls the wagon. Um, you do definitely, and of course, I'm from elements.cloud, so I will always say that, but you do need metadata management, and you also need to focus on architecture. This is quite important. Then, of course, you have other things like governance, change control, et cetera, and, 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 and tooling. Uh, and then the larger you get, so we have now a medium scaled uh, situation, you know, there's business, admin, uh, business analysts, there's admin teams, development teams, system integrators, et cetera. So you get, you need more of these, uh, these things. And of course, if you're a very large multi-org, multi-cloud, et cetera, you, you probably will need all of them. But you have to be very careful of is that you don't exaggerate. So don't create those skills or those, those, those things just for the sake of, well, it was in a list. So <laughs> we thought it's quite wise to sort of add them, right? Now, if you look at the tools and stuff which are already in place in the Salesforce ecosystem, these are the tools and the system and, 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 and the things. Um, so, for example, if you go to Trailhead uh, and all the certifications, they do quite a nice job on, uh, for example, architecture and uh, prototyping, but also quite nicely things on governance, change control, and change management. Uh, all the other things, yeah, sort of, you know. And then, of course, we have well, elements of cloud. Uh, yeah, they do some really nice things on change control, methodology, metadata management, obviously, and change management and tooling but then not much on vision or leadership, et cetera. So you can always see it's a, it's a combination of, of things to put in place um, and to have the right, uh, remember that picture I showed you with all the tools, to have the right structure and organization in, in that whole thing. What I do also think is that if you look at DevOps, you know, they, they tackle quite some, quite some interesting things, but also program management. So basically it's, it's always a combination of, these, uh, of these, uh, um, these pillars in order to start. But, you know, you can only eat an elephant bit, you know, bit by bit, right? You don't have to start to eat the whole thing in, in one time. You just start, build something small, you know, uh, pick the low hanging, hanging fruit and, and off you go. Basically that's, that's my message in this, uh, in this picture. So basically my key takeaways are that I think that the COEs are relevant to every project. Uh, they don't have to be like monsters. Um, it is of course based on project size. So it depends a little bit on how big the project is, how big your dev, dev team or how big your admin team is. Uh, and then you just put things in place. Um, it is a slight investment it depends on how you want to tackle it, but it is always ending up with a positive ROI. 
And then, uh, well, there's a couple of resources you can, uh, well, the, I think the, the whole thing will be uh, recorded and it's, it's recorded anyway, so you can actually uh, check that out in the, um, in the slides or in, in the summary. And that basically uh, completes my uh, presentation. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so, two questions. First, sure. where does it fit in Scrum? And by the way, people love the uh, in reinventing the wheel slide that you had, but now the question is, so where this one fits in Scrum? Uh, that's a good one. So if you look at Scrum, uh, Scrum is yet another tool, right? So it's yet another tool that will perfectly fit in. Uh, if we, let me again. Maybe I could go back to my um, life cycle picture. Oops, I'm a little bit too quick. So, for example, if you look at this picture over here, um, let me see where that would fit in. Um, yeah, well. I would almost say it, it touches quite a lot of these things. So you 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 come up with the operation, then you you get all the feedback, then you create your or your user story. So basically, somewhere here. Um, but it is one of those things that actually can be put in place, but needs to be handled. So to give you an idea, if I'm a business user, and I don't know, I want to. I don't know, want to find out, you know, validation of customers. How, how do we do that, right? I can think about validation of customers, you know, validate a customer on a very high level way. So this is how I validate the customer. This is the easiest or the best way to do it. But then, of course, we need to automate a couple of things. You know, you want to do some, some I don't know, credit checks and, and, and stuff. And before you know it, you have a user story or a requirement. And uh, Scrum is basically a, a methodology that actually, you know, supports that thought but it should always come from um, uh, not just because we can do it but it's because of the need of the of the business and that's so so it's very difficult to say where exactly does it sit but yes it can be definitely part of the uh, of the um, of the tool set of the coe right so it's not it's not it's not like it's not competing with with scrum it's it's, it's scrum would easily fit in in this in this picture thank you uh Panos, you want to ask your questions yourself, please? <laughs> you, the one that is here. Um, yeah, my question is off topic a bit, maybe. Um, I was just wondering why in your... Yeah, I had to look up the name, actually. Uh, where is my question? Yeah, so you have this universal process notation, right? Yeah. And um, I had to to use your tool in my previous project and it helped a lot. But where I struggled really too much was that there were no or statements, right? Gateways. You only have this. Ah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. is the logic behind this? <laughs> I can, oh, I can answer this question so very well because I'm actually one of the process guys that invented the whole notation. Yeah. Um, yes, I, uh, it's, it's pretty, so for the other people who are, who are actually listening in and, 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 and checking out now UPN universal process notation, what we have done is, and if you're familiar with, you know, process diagrams, you know, creating a flow chart, say, uh, there's a notation and notation means, well, we need, for example, the yes, no notation, or we need a, this, this, this sort of, uh, what is the thing, this, this little, um, figure, what is this icon, um, what's the thing called? Um, the decision symbol where you say, um, for example, uh, check, check customer. And then uh, does the customer exist? Yes, no, right? So in yes, no means we have this sort of, sort of, you know, icon, this, 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 this shape, this decision, this diamond shape to show there's a decision. If you go very far in this, you can, up, you can end up with the so-called BPMN notation, which means that there's like things like exclusive ORs and then very technical. Now, and this immediately uh, tells me, okay, wait a minute, uh, are you focusing on you know, very technical people or, or who's your audience? That's, the, that's your main question. So what we have done, we have taken out all the, as we say, complicated uh, you know, shapes and stuff um, and then you get this very, very easy to read diagram, but not very exact. And that's, I think, what you want to refer to. So you go like, yeah, but I cannot really make a flow out of it because it is not exact. It's, not, it's almost not mathematical. Now, what we have done is uh, thought about what, what, what do we want to represent? Now, we, we want to represent the contextual situation. So basically, here's my business well, process without all the difficult symbols and shapes and stuff. 
But if, of course, if you drill down, literally drill down to more detail, you will end up in a situation where you do need those symbols. We do not provide those symbols. So how do you go about? Well, you basically, if you're, for example, familiar with Physio or Lucichart, which does have those symbols, then you just simply attach that one diagram to one of our activity boxes. So basically you would have an activity box and then you can attach that whatever complicated thing or representation you have or are used to simply in the context of the what we call universal process notation. So that's basically um, how it works or how it should work in our opinion. So it's not, it's not, a, it's not, I mean, if you have worked with the tool, it's not, um, you know, press a button and it executes. That, that, that's not how it works. It's also not the intention uh, of this. Does that sort of answer your question? Mm. When you say attach, I didn't get uh, what you mean. It's more like right. when I drill down to more levels, you mean that yeah. the, the yeah, higher you, level gives the answer? Yeah, if you, if you would drill down in a diagram, so you would imagine you have a process diagram, something a little bit like what, you, what you're looking at right now. So for example, you have, uh, I don't know, uh, document, and document is an activity, then you would answer the how question or by, by drilling down in on document. So you, how do you document? Well, we do first this, then this, and this. And then of course, if you drill down into more detail, you get into more rigor, right? It becomes more technical. And then it's, it's your choice to do we stay with UPN or do we say, wait a minute, this is so, this is so, so technical. This needs to be so exact, you know, that actually I want, I don't want to use UPN anymore. I just want to attach, you know, use a Visio or a Lucid chart. So basically what you can do, literally can do is attach a, shall we say, specialistic or more specific diagram notation into our notation. That's basically what you can do, which I know, but which I also recommend because there will, there will be a moment where you need to, where you need to flow, etc. Right. So that's, that's, that's what I think, uh, how, it, how it should work. And does that answer your question? Yes, oh. thanks, clear. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's why sometimes I'm not a, a good person to read the questions that we have on the chat rates. Way beyond me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Walter, for the lovely presentation. Everything will be included in, uh, in the video uh, that I posted on YouTube.